but we're looking forward to those uh, improvements and certainly uh, needed in those areas of the stadium. So we're excited about those. Um, we're opening camp today and we don't open practice, but uh, we are um, practicing earlier tomorrow, which is not a uh, seven, eight year tradition for us. We, we, we traditionally practice in the afternoon. Um, we've got some guys still doing final exams and it was gonna cost us to miss a few guys. So we flipped the um, practice schedule around and gonna go a little earlier at least tomorrow, then go back to our normal practice time in the afternoon uh, moving forward from that. So um, that probably prompted this uh, meeting to happen today as opposed to tomorrow with us going earlier with the first practice. But I'm excited to get the guys out there. They've had a great uh, summer workout session. Um, you usually measure summer success by where you are injury-wise um, in terms of soft tissue injuries, trying to avoid those, but you're also trying to be in shape. So the only way to get in shape is run and run in the heat. So I felt like up until maybe the July 4th break, we had not had the heat exposure we needed. We had not been uh, outside and conditioning in the heat. And then as soon as I said that, it flipped really quick and it got really hot. And uh, from our July 4th break on, our guys have trained uh, really hard in the heat, uh, had a lot of acclimation. Um, we don't do quote unquote testing anymore where you come in and have to run a test, but I feel really good about where our guys are from a conditioning level. Um, the biggest focus for us in training camp is uh, physical and mental toughness. That's why we do training camp. Um, we try to expose our guys to a lot of scheme. Um, we try to expose our guys to uh, getting to know each other, um, moving into one central location, and really focusing just on ourselves. Uh, I think the difference in the, 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 the two teams from the last two years is they connected well in, tra in training camp. That'll be a goal. Uh, in this training camp to see how well we connect and how, how well we compete. We got a lot of jobs that are going to be up for grabs and up for competition, and I'm very eager to see our guys compete for those spots. So with that, I'll open it up. Okay, raise your hand. We'll get one of the remote mics to you. Kirby, when you look at quarterbacks specifically, what do you want to see from all three of those guys through this fall camp? the things you're looking for from the quarterbacks? I want to see them be where their feet are. You know, I, I just got through talking to the team 10 minutes ago and just said, you know, I had three or four older players, fifth year and fourth year players tell the younger players what the expectation for training camp is. And that's exactly what I think about when I think about quarterbacks, you know, to worry about today's walkthrough, today's recovery period, today's uh, meetings, um, whatever we're allowed to have, we're going to have the day, and the only thing you should worry about is that. And then tonight, you can start worrying about tomorrow. Uh, but for those quarterbacks, you know, it's it's not to overwhelm themselves with the results, to overwhelm themselves with the process of getting better. They're going to get a lot of reps in the next 25 practices. They're going to get a chance to compete in the next 25 practices. So each one of them has individual things they need to work on. Um, but for for the whole, I want to see them, you know, manage the offense, understand the offense, get people lined up and execute and the guy that does that best in critical situations will, will, will be the guy that becomes a quarterback. Yeah, Kirby, with the secondary of one, how is the process going of, of replacing a leadership left by guys like Chris and Keeley? And two, uh, with a guy like Javon, how do you evaluate you know, what he could bring to defense as star versus what he could bring at safety when you're evaluating you know, where to play the final centers? Yeah, the leadership, we have really good leadership in our secondary. I think Coach Muschamp and Coach Fran do a great job of developing leadership. Probably one of our strongest leadership positions between Bullard, Taki, uh, Kamari, um, Malachi. I mean, it's just Dan Jackson. The names go on and on in terms of good leaders in those rooms. Um, the second part of your question, as far as Bullard, you know, you don't always weigh it based on what's, uh, what's, what, what's Bullard's best position for the team. It's who can play the positions around him. So, you know, we're weighing that option. He, we feel like he's a very experienced star. He, he, he spent majority of his development as a football player as star since being here. So we have really tried to push the safety issue in order to create more depth there uh, and then figure out who's the best around him. I think Javon's one of our best 11 football players, but who is number 10 and 11 and where do they fit? Uh, and all that should play out in, in camp. Uh, staying on the secondary, Kirby, how do you determine when it comes to cross training in the secondary? Is it by position, these, these positions are cross trainers, or is it by player? And how, does, how is it working out for you? 
Uh, I would start with cross training probably is more contingent on the age of the player, the experience level of the player. We don't like to have an incoming player trying to cross train. That's usually not fair to them. Um, we have volume in our defense. We've proven that you can play as a true freshman uh, and be successful in our defense. So it's not too much to learn, like some people say, and try to use it against, against us in recruiting. We had a kid, Malachi Starks, that walked in and played every single game um, at safety from a true freshman perspective. But we're not going to ask that guy to cross train. So we, we usually do cross training based on uh, the volume they can withstand and how much they can learn. Uh, and we make those, those decisions very, very delicately because there's a lot of guys you'd like to cross train that you can't uh, and you got to pick the right spot. The part of being a good coach is, is where do you put the players and where do you put the people on the seats on the bus. Uh, Kirby, you mentioned injuries at the very beginning. Is there anybody that's going to be on the shelf for you to start preseason camp who's, who's kind of going to be slowed or, or out to, to begin camp for you? Uh, so I think y'all know Smile and Branson would both um, be running. They're cleared to run, uh, land running, and, and, and do things, but they're not going to be full speed practicing. So uh, those would be the Smile and, and Branson would be the two that are both ahead of the schedule that we thought, you know, five, six weeks ago. Um, but they're not going to be cleared to just go out there and practice. Michael has been able to do some activity and uh, do some football activity and conditioning with us, and he should be should be a lower volume, but he should be able to, to practice. Um, uh, Ty Ingram, Dawkins is dealing with a little bit of a, a, a navicular uh, foot issue, but it's not a break or anything right now. It's a stress reaction that we've had to hold him back out some and, and keep him out of activity some, but he should be cleared soon. I don't think there's anybody else. We've got a few hamstrings and, and things like that, but the major deal is right now is Ty, Smile, and Branson, I think. Coach, kind of on that topic, how do you go about preparing your team for the physicality required to win in this league while also making sure that you're, you're healthy and ready to go at the beginning of the season? Well, I think that's a goal of training camp to establish physical and mental toughness. Well, how do you do that? You don't go out and say, oh, God, please don't get hurt. Um, <clears throat> football's a tough a dangerous sport, which we, we, we practice as smart as anybody in the country. So uh, we feel like we have a method that allows us to be physical and be tough um, and, and also protect our players. We've been very fortunate in terms of training camp in the past, and uh, you know we're still you know, a month out. So we, we want to we get better, and uh, we want our players to grow and get better. And that you don't get better by not practicing. So we're going to be physical, we're going to go against each other, and we're going to compete. Kirby, uh, what kind of leader is Carson? Uh, is he more in your face or by example? And have you been pleased with what he's shown you from a leadership standpoint? Yeah, uh, Carson is a very uh, even kill individual. He's been that way since we recruited him all the way back to his 11th grade year. He's not a highs and lows. He's not a real emotional guy. He's not a real fiery guy. Um, he's, he's very um, laid back. Um, and, and he understands his job. He's very intelligent, uh, but he's, you know, every leader has their own way. And uh, he certainly um, commands the room. I think the, the, the players around him understand how bright he is and they trust him. Uh, and Carson's had a lot of reps and a lot of work, but it's hadn't all been game reps. So he's had a, a huge mass of, of reps against good defense, you know, against really good defense in ours. So, um, but his 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 leadership methods kind of still still being developed. It's no different than Gunner and, and Brock. I mean, they each one have different uh, ways about them, and that's that's true with the guy that just left too. Kirby, you've got a guy, awesome Blast, who's going into uh, year four with the program. Just what has his progression been at tackle, and what kind of player is he just on and off the field? Uh, he's extremely tough. He's, he's extremely dedicated. He's very prideful in his work. Um, he's one of the most versatile linemen we've had. You know, he's played center. He's played tackle. He can play guard. He's smart. Um, uh, he's, he, he, he strains so hard that he makes himself relevant in terms of the movement he gets in the run game, uh, screen game. He can go out on the perimeter and block guys. He's a good athlete. Um, you know, he's a real good wrestler in, in high school and just been really pleased with how much he's improved to put himself in a, in a competition to where he can contribute and play.
Kirby, I think you said in the spring that you weren't sure if you had uh, train wreckers and havoc makers, and um, you'd have to see. Have you seen anything this summer? Anybody have strong summers, stand out physically, guys developing in the interior defensive line? I, I don't know that I could measure by anything we see in the summer. I mean, the summer is built so much around <clears throat> conditioning and lifting weights, which are not. They're not, not pertinent to being uh, uh, train wreckers and havoc makers on a, with football pads on. You know, it may, may be a measure of strength, maybe a measure of stamina, but not necessarily um, disruptive uh, nature. You know, so I don't know where we're at in terms of that. I, I certainly concern myself with depth as all positions, but that's a position the the defensive line. So I would say end tackle and nose all in one concerns me in terms of depth. Um, there's like a lot of positions worry me in depth. You know, offensive tackle concerns me in depth. We, we've been spoiled at some positions, and uh, every year it's different. You know, it's a different issue uh, each and every year, but that's, that's one of the issues we have this year is do we have enough players that can play winning football at each position group? Kirby, as you guys get going, I have a big picture question in terms of uh, the non-conference schedule. How do you think it might impact you, you know, at the end of the year, you know, not having Oklahoma, adding a, an All-State uh, when the playoff committee, you know, decides that, you know, will one loss be uh, put you on, on a dangerous you know, spot, you think? I, I mean, this thoughts never even crossed my mind. I mean, is, is, is there any part of that that, that, that I control? No. No. So I, I can't, I cannot concern myself with any part of that. I mean, all we can do is go out and try to schedule the best we can. And when we scheduled the game with Oklahoma, we, we, we were trying to do that. We're trying to create this this identity of we wanted to play our conference schedule, we wanted to play Georgia Tech, and we wanted to play others. Um, and you know, we lost out on that because of a, a realignment. I mean, a, you know, reconfer adding teams to the conference, and that that just is what it is. So, I certainly don't concern myself with the thoughts of the college football playoff committee because I, I don't have any control over it. Kirby, it's common when you have a successful program that you're going to lose assistant coaches. Obviously, you lost a really good offensive coordinator this this past offseason. What did Todd bring to the program, and how difficult will it be to replace him in your Yeah, I think anytime you lose a coordinator, you could rank it up there with like, okay, is that equal to an assistant coach? Probably not. I mean, you would think losing a coordinator is greater than others. I think retaining the rest of the offensive staff and I think Ty would be the first to tell you, you know, once I knew he was leaving and I sat down and had a long meeting with him, he, 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 he re-emphasized how good this staff was at doing their job of presenting him ideas. I think a lot of people look at offense coordinator as an island and this guy just sits over there and comes up with this stuff himself. Well, they have 15, 20 meetings a week on Monday, Sunday night, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, where each coach gives a presentation of ideas or things they can do offensively, and he gets to sit back and be the decision maker on what's in and what's not. And those ideas really helped him, and he was quick to say, Coach, you're going to be fine no matter who you put in that position because you're going to oversee it, make sure they do it right as the leader, and then they're going to do a good job because they have pride in their performance as assistant coaches on offense, and then whoever you put in that position is going to have good players and be able to be successful. So uh, I was very, we were very fortunate to have uh, Todd the time he was here, uh, the growth he allowed us to make, the confidence he exuded with the players, and um, and he, 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 he had a package of offense that he felt confident in that fit the players that he was given. He made the personnel fit his, his scheme. And I don't see that I don't see that changing. You know, obviously the, the quarterback is a major, major part of that. And we had really good quarterback play last year. So uh, a lot of times your offense is predicated off your quarterback play. So how well will our quarterback play and, and that's the question. Kirby, uh, each year you will host some coaches from other programs. You send some of your guys or you yourself will go to other programs. Can you tell us maybe some of the teams you hosted, some of the programs you hosted, and some of the places you guys went and collaborated with? Yeah, with, since the COVID year, we've, we've kind of quit doing it because we found that uh, it's a lot easier to do through Zoom methods. So we didn't go out and visit as many. Now, several of our coaches went to pro camps or went and met with maybe a, a, a D-line community or a, a O-line community group, and they all kind of share ideas. 
Um, but we didn't, you know, per se have anybody uh, in particular we went and met with. But our individual coaches certainly studied teams that had the most turnovers, teams that did the best in the red area, teams that, that did something well. We tried to pick their brain on how they did it without getting into any specific schools. Not much of an off season now, but high school coaches and those teams got started practice this week. We talked to those coaches and they say they're so excited the night before they can barely sleep and the first day feels like Christmas Day things get official. Do you still get those emotions feel that way? I get excited, yeah. Not so much for today, but for tomorrow I do. I think uh, tomorrow being the first day we can go out and practice. But you know, the NCAA has allowed you to do so much more in the summer. I was just telling our players it's so different. You know, we, we, we didn't we didn't see our coaches when we were here in the summer. We, 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 we had testing when we got back. It was the first day that freshmen reported was today. Now, we had 19 kids here in the spring. We had, I don't know, four or five show up summer, but they've even done, you know, workouts. It's not like the buildup of a NFL training camp where you haven't seen guys. Like, we've seen our guys. They're here. They work out every day. So it's very important to separate summer to training camp. And sometimes as a kid, you can't see the separation because it's just constant. It's just all in a row. So we try to make a clear delineation between this is the end of this, this is the start of this. Kirby, how have you seen Xavier Sori develop in his time in the program, and how important is he as one of the older guys and would smile uh, banged up in that linebacker room? Yeah, probably the most growth that Xavier has had has been in the last, I don't know, five months, six months. I mean, since Smile's injury, he has exponentially grown in terms of confidence, ability to execute, um, he's been healthy, number one, and he's had a lot of opportunity of reps of being out there with the ones. So, I mean, he's a guy who has really picked it up in terms of leadership and growth, and he has a lot of athletic ability. Coach, I know last year you moved Taylor Walker outside backer, had some of the injuries kind of cropped up, specifically with a Nolan. How did he kind of do with that moving outside? Did you expect him to, to stay that position, or could he also play some inside as well? No, he'll start it inside. That's his natural position. That's what he wants to grow at, and he'll be in that competition uh, for guys that, that get an opportunity to play. He, he has a unique trait of being able to rush the passer well, which not all inside linebackers have. So he has some outside linebacker characteristics, and he helped us a lot last year on third down. So because of the injuries we had, we were like, okay, he's got a better chance to play an OLB than an ILB this year. And really, entire time he was out in the spring with a shoulder, he still was in the ILB room, and he'll start in the ILB room. But he'll he'll be part of a third down package that allows him to rush the passer. Good time for two more questions. And outside linebacker, you guys lose Nolan Hughes, Robert. You're going at that position. How do you get the most out of that group this August, especially when they can't hit the quarterback in practice? Well, I don't think hitting the quarterback makes you a better outside linebacker. I mean, I think we can determine whether they win or lose each rush uh, based on the result. Without, you know, I'd love to be able to practice finishing, but we never get to practice that. Uh, I'm excited to see that group grow. We have a lot of uh, young, eager uh, guys that, that need to grow. And we've got a, the oldest vet in the room is Chaz, and he sets the tempo and the tone of the room all the time. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to see those guys grow. grow. And, you know, we got to find uh, unique ways to use those guys because, you know, some of them uh, have really good athletic traits. And, um, you know, we got to have times where we have two and three guys on the field at that position. Coach, could you assess uh, what you hope to see from the running back group, specifically Dejan Edwards? I know he carried the ball a ton last year, but you mentioned it at SEC Media Days. You really need to see some pass catching Billy out of that whole group. Can you kind of assess that through? Yeah, that, that'll be the challenge. I think Andrew coming off the knee is where is he in terms of like catching the ball, uh, stamina, uh, burst, acceleration. Uh, Branson, when can we get him back? Obviously, Kendall and Dejan have the most experience. A guy who had a great offseason and put up really good numbers in the weight room is Cash. You know, Cash is maybe our fastest back, um, pound for pound. He may be the strongest guy on the team. And uh, he, he, his, his unique ability is to catch the ball out of the backfield. But Dejan has got to be a guy that is consistent, stays healthy, durable. Um, and be kind of the, 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 I mean, he and Kendall both, be the leader of that group in terms of the way they work, catch the ball out of the backfield. I'm just excited to see all those guys work. I don't know that we have a, you know, a superstar in the group. We've got a group that by committee does a tremendous job and they work really hard and they put the, you know, they put the team first. All those guys play on special teams and they've been a huge help for, for our, our special teams units.
Thank you.